Now to Minneapolis, where the defense has arrested their case in the federal trial for three former officers charged with violating George Floyd's civil rights. Thomas Lane took the stand today, the last defendant to testify in his own defense. Lane, J. Alexander King, and Two Tower are accused of failing to provide medical aid to Floyd, while Derek Chauvin pressed his knee against his neck for nine and a half minutes. King and Tao are also charged with failing to intervene. My lawyers are still with me, veteran prosecutor Paul Henderson and criminal defense attorney Karen Felicia Nance. All right, guys, so let's get into Thomas Lane's testimony. Um, he recounted how he responded to the call from the convenience store about someone trying to use a counterfeit $20 bill. He described how George Floyd resisted when they tried to get him into the squad car and how they pinned him face down on the ground. At one point, uh, defense attorney Earl Gray asked, four minutes in, did he cease resisting? And Lane responds, we were holding him in place. I said, should we roll him on his side? Chauvin said, no, we're good like this. Paul, was Lane's testimony helpful to his case? Now, remember, he's facing a charge of failing to provide medical aid. Um, it was helpful to his case, but I don't think speaks to enough of the evidence to overturn the allegation and to get him off, quite frankly. I mean, I, I think it was compelling how he testified in addressing the situation. Uh, I wanted him to answer directly the questions that were asked of him about when he stopped resisting. And even with the work that he put in, crying on the stand, being sympathetic, and talking about trying to take some actions, it just wasn't enough at the end of the day. And I want prosecution to make sure that they make the point that his behavior, and including his testimony, was two things, too little and too late. Karen, um, of the three, Lane is the one that's charged with the least amount of uh, charges in this case, and, uh, which would say that he did the most of the three. So will that actually help him um, with yours? With the, the prosecution making the decision to only charge him with one count and the other two officers with two counts, I believe that's their concession. They felt that the fact that he did ask two times uh, whether that uh, he should render aid uh, to uh, ask Chauvin whether he should render aid. I think that that's very powerful in terms of the prosecution's view of the case. And so should he be convicted of the one count? I, I believe absolutely he should. But in terms of the three of them, when you put them all together, did he do more than, uh, and I agree with Paul, was it, a, it was a little bit more than, but uh, that's why the decision was made apparently to only charge him with the one count and the other two with, with two counts. So yes, I, I believe that he should be convicted and I believe that he did a little bit more. He, he and uh, King were new officers, and on the beat, they had only been there less than a week. There was some discussion as to whether or not they felt that Chauvin was in charge. Uh, Tao said no, that uh, King and, and Lane were the first officers on the scene, and they were in charge. But I think it's reasonable to assume that new officers are going to defer to someone with a lot more experience who was Chauvin. That doesn't excuse the behavior, but I think it does explain why they deferred to him. Paul, Lane also got emotional at least twice while testifying. Um, he choked up when he talked about the EMTs trying to get Floyd into the ambulance. Um, his attorney asked, what went through your mind when you saw his face and he was flipped over? And Lane said he didn't look good. Um, Paul, we've seen defendants in other trials crying on the stand, and, and sometimes the emotions, um, you know, are perceived not to be genuine, right, or sincere. Uh, but please keep in mind that Lane is the only one who went into the ambulance with Floyd and the only one to show any emotion on the stand. Will this help his case with jurors? I, ultimately, I don't think it will help his case with the jurors. And you didn't ask this question, but I think it's fair to raise it as to whether or not those tears were authentic. And I believe that they were. I think that he is sad that this incident happened, and certainly he is fearful for what is likely and could happen to him. The issue, though, is do the tears negate the fact that he did too little and too late? And because he took action after George Floyd was already dead, to me, the bigger issue is, what about those nine and a half minutes? That's when I wanted his tears or his action or something to be done. 
And again, this was not in a bubble because let's just take him out of it as an officer that may have been acting in a deferential state. The other people around George Floyd were saying again and again, over and over, intervene, stop, you're hurting him, you're killing him. George Floyd himself was saying, you're hurting me, you're killing me, calling out for his own mother. All of that being ignored, that's what this trial is about. And I don't want the jurors to lose sight of what he may have done after George Floyd was dead to try and help and assist with the medication instead of doing his duty and performing his duty, defining public safety in a way that would have protected or saved George's Floyd life while he was killed right in front of him. And again, not in a split second, not in just a moment, but in nine and a half mo minutes. Those are the moments that make him guilty. It's that time that he didn't take action that defined his guilt, not what he did afterwards, although those things are mitigating factors and exactly why he's only charged with one of the case. But I still believe that he's guilty and his tears were authentic on the stand. See, I, I, I think of the three, Lane is probably going to be the one that's acquitted because even though he was charged with failure to render aid, I think his um, asking Chauvin twice, shouldn't we roll yeah. Floyd on his side, was his way of saying he needs help here and this is going to help him, right? Um, but listen, during cross-examination, the prosecutor asked Lane, about his training and, and got him to agree that it was his duty to provide aid, uh, even if he was afraid of angering a field training officer like Derek Chauvin. Um, Karen, it's always good for any witness, especially a defendant, to just concede to obvious points. And, and in this case, Lane did. Um, will that hurt him, though, in his admission that, listen, yeah, I, I should have done more, even, even if I did um, you know, even if I was being trained by someone who has way more experience like Derek Schoen. Absolutely. I believe that that does go to his guilt in this particular, that the elements of the crime have been uh, established. And I think that the difference is with the tears, for example, one could argue that he was crying for his self, you know, as opposed to for, for the death of George Floyd. And, and I think uh, to Paul's point, you have all of these uh, bystanders and witnesses who are very vocal about what's going on. And he had plenty of opportunities. He didn't have to defer to Derek Chauvin. He could have taken a, a listen to what the others were saying and, and, and render aid. And I don't think he would have been, clearly he wouldn't have been faulted for that. We have a situation where we had have these three officers aside from Chauvin that had an opportunity to do something more and they didn't do that. And if one of them, if even one of them had done something, there would have most probably been a different outcome. So I think that I agree with absolutely with Paul that even though he's only charged with one of the counts, that he didn't do enough. And he has to face that the music with that. And and hopefully this is a message to others that uh, that you need to intervene. You need to go with your gut response. Just saying, please, you know, can I turn him over? And he said it twice was clearly not enough. And he'll have to live with that as, as the rest of the officers charged will as well. I definitely think that even if the prosecution scored a point there, um, I don't think that the jury is actually going to punish him with a conviction on that case. I, I just have a feeling he's going to be acquitted. I think what they're going to do is blame the actual department for training their officers to always defer and listen no matter what to their training officers. Paul, the prosecutors and um, the defense uh, will present their closing arguments tomorrow. What do you expect from each side? Hey, I think, and you just raised the point, the very point that you just raised is the thing that I think you will hear and see tomorrow. That is what the defense should hang their hat on. They should have exploited that moment a little bit longer, but I expect them to now argue that, hey, listen, things were happening in the moment. Yes, we received training, but in that moment, we weren't sure. A lot was going on, and we acted on Lane's behalf. When Lane said something, we thought that was an action. We thought that was going to do something. We thought that would change things. And it didn't happen just one time. It happened mm -hmm. two times where he tried to verbally intervene. Mm -hmm. I wish Lane had focused on that a little bit more. I think that was a misstep from the defense. 
I think that would have opened the door for consideration and for sympathy for him of saying and doing what he thought that he could and articulating that more clearly rather than letting it pass. But if the prosecution and the defense are smart, that is the moment that they'll either have to drill down upon or expand upon in order mm -hmm. to get verdict that is reflective of what both of those sides would want and expect from this case. That would that really is I, the my opinion, that's the linchpin of understanding this case. And it's also the linchpin of a halfway valid defense that they could raise or at least an argument that they can present that might be sympathetic to this jury. I don't think it will still ultimately get them to guilty, but they, that's what they should argue. Well I also think that Jay Allen I think that Jay Alexander King should have exploited that as well um, yeah. because he was the one that was closest in proximity to Lane. He could have said, listen, when Lane suggested twice to Derek Chauvin that we should do something different, he said, no, I, what was I going to say that was going to be any different? I was also training, right? Missed that point, exactly. too, uh, while he was on the stand. Maybe his, attor maybe his attorneys will get to it in closing, though. All right, Paul Henderson, right. Karen Felicia Nance, thank you both for sharing your legal expertise with us tonight. I appreciate you both.